We'll jump right in. It's going to be a very demo heavy talk. Uh, lots of cool stuff to show off. And uh, looking for some good feedback at the end. We'll have a little bit more discussion over quick QA. So, the purpose of this talk, I wanted to talk a little bit about the process we've gone through to bring JRuby from being you know, a, a nice sort of working implementation of Ruby to actually a production ready, one of the fastest, scales well, all of that. Uh, and really it's been an amazing challenge to try and get this all working. Uh, I wanted to go over a few of the things that we've had to do just to show how we've managed to get so far and how that work is actually helping other languages on the, on the JVM. All right, so first off, I'll uh, introduce myself. We'll talk a little bit about what JRuby is for anybody who's not familiar with it. And then we'll also go right into the, uh, the different challenges that we faced and talk about what, what was involved in meeting all of those challenges. Okay, so I am Charles Nutter. I work at Sun Microsystems, uh, one of the JRuby guys. Uh, it's my, my primary role. I've also kind of been uh, supporting JVM languages and trying to be a Java platform advocate over the past several years. Uh, I do a lot of late night hacking, spend way too much time working on stuff late into hours of the night, and uh, JRuby is definitely been one of the main, main projects for me over the past few years. Okay, so JRuby, does anybody not know what JRuby is? Okay, uh, so, so basically JRuby being Ruby for the JVM, uh, it's written mostly in Java, we got an interpreter, we do have a bytecode compiler as well. Uh, it kind of lives in two worlds. It really is just a Ruby implementation, but we also want to treat it as just another JVM language. So we want to be able to integrate with the platform, all the different libraries, just be a, a normal JVM language citizen. And it represents a, a great challenge for us and for the JVM uh, because of the fact that Ruby, unlike some other JVM languages you're going to hear about uh, at, at Community One or at Java One if you're here the rest of the week, Ruby is an off-platform community, an off-platform world that we've actually brought onto the JVM. So it has all of its own challenges, lots of impossible tasks, and that's what we're going to go straight into here. So here is, here's the goal that we had for JRuby years ago. Uh, we thought we could get it basically working at the very least, but our ultimate goal was to implement an off-platform set of APIs on the JVM with support for binary or character strings, which is what Ruby does for string, string manipulation, have access to all the typical POSIX APIs, have access to calling out to native libraries, fast regular expressions over that byte-based string that we've got, uh, with all of the same sort of libc IO semantics uh, as well, all still built on top of the JVM, and simultaneously making this whole thing run Ruby code with native threads, parallel native threads for the first time in the Ruby world, and making the performance better than the original C-based implementation in the process. So it's, you know, it's, it's a reasonably difficult task to try and do all of this together, and to make the entire thing fit and work well, and then do all of that without a language or API spec for Ruby. So that kind of puts it in, in, uh, in, uh, in context. Uh, and why would you want to try and do this sort of thing? Well, we really like Ruby, obviously. We believe that Ruby is beautiful, expressive, it's very fun. It's a language that's designed for the programmer, it's designed so that Ruby developers are happy writing Ruby code. And, you know, after seeing Ruby, I really just wanted to have a Ruby that ran well on the JVM and that I could use for doing all of the work I normally do in Java. Uh, the Ruby community are also doing a lot of things their own way. Uh, for example, uh, Rails is probably the most prevalent one on that list. Rails has changed the way web frameworks are being developed across all platforms. It's become one of the, it's become the, the meter stick every other framework is being measured against as far as ease of use, how quickly you can bootstrap applications. If the Ruby community had been totally bound up with standard Java web application practices or standard web application practices before Rails, they may never have come up with this. So by bringing this platform into the JVM, we bring in a lot of new ideas and new ways of looking at some of these problems. Uh, and of course we like a challenge. It's, uh, it's interesting, fun work to make something like this actually happen. You always hope that you're going to be able to succeed at it, but even the process of just working on it, you learn a lot from it. So, the plan we had, uh, no specification, as I mentioned. So essentially the applications that were out there are the specification for Ruby. That's what we have to make run. So we pulled in a lot, pulled in some partial test suites that were out there. 
started in about uh, January 2006 in earnest to really make JRuby run well. And the first step was simply to get IRB, Ruby's interactive shell, running on JRuby. We figured if we, could, if we could get that much working, that's kind of a good first step we can move on to the next phase. Then we needed to get Ruby Gems working, which is Ruby's packaging system. And then the big one would be actually to get Rails to run out of the box on JRuby so that people can use JRuby to do Rails development. And then, of course, step four, which is the ongoing process, uh, is to make the whole thing production quality, make it something that people actually want to run for real applications. So interactive Ruby was the first challenge we faced. Uh, it's basically the, the read eval print loop for, uh, uh, for Ruby. You would start it up, type in code, and you'll see it run interactively. Uh, the primary challenge here was just basically getting Ruby compatibility to work, uh, getting Ruby's eval of running this piece of code, uh, a string as a piece of code, getting the, all the intricate details of that functioning, uh, getting all the variables and constant scoping, kind of the lowest level of getting Ruby itself to run was what we needed to have IRB functioning. Uh, the secondary challenge was that one of the lot, it was the first time we had uh, an external library support that was, an uh, external library needed that really wasn't well supported on the JVM. We needed read line support so that you could page through history, so that you could do line editing, all of that stuff on the command line. And there were a couple good ones on the JVM. We've ended up with a pretty good solution using JLine right now. Ruby Gems being the next challenge, uh, we really had to have Ruby Gems working so that all of the libraries that are out there in the Ruby world, all 4,000, 5,000 libraries that are written for Ruby, would be easily installable and runnable on JRuby. So the primary challenge was getting a YAML parser written. Uh, and we had a, a contributor, Olavini, came in and wrote first a pure Ruby YAML support for us and then later on a Java-based YAML support for performance. Uh, there was no existing complete YAML implementation on the JVM before this. Now there is, and now other people can use it. So this is one of the first examples of something we've actually done that has helped the Java ecosystem, that you can't use YAML, this uh, much lighter weight mark markup language, on the JVM with any other language or any other application now. Uh, secondary challenge was uh, getting Zlib, Ruby Zlib, to work. For the most part, this was just wrapping the existing zip capabilities on the JVM. And then sockets, uh, getting sockets to run correctly. Again, mostly just wrapping what was on the JVM, though there's uh, lingering challenges with getting sockets to work like they do in C. So YAML is the first one. I mentioned that Ola wrote this. Uh, Ola wrote the original library in Ruby, wrote the next one in Java. And uh, as a result of working on this, not only do we have a YAML library that Java developers can use, we actually are more compliant with the YAML markup specification than the C implementation of Ruby. So we've managed to go one step beyond what Ruby can do at this level. All right, Zlib, I mentioned. OK, it sockets. So then Rails. We, had, we got IRB working. We got Ruby gems to function. We were able to remotely install gems. So you can pull them down, start, uh, and get Rails, get the database libraries, get great other libraries that are available for Ruby. And we needed to get Rails to work. Uh, and it was around uh, Java 1 2006, we got uh, a message from Tim Bray saying that if we could get Rails to run by Java 1 that year, that there may be good things in store for us. Uh, and uh, so the big things we had to do for this was getting the database stuff to work. Uh, Nick Seeger and Ola Bini collaborated on getting a JDBC wrapper, for, uh, wrapping JDBC to provide Rails Active Record ORM layer. Uh, managed to get it functioning. We actually managed to get the whole thing to run for Java 1 that year, and a couple months later we were hired by Sun. So it was a good thing. Um, so Active Record JDBC, essentially just wrapping JDBC. It's a little bit tricky to match Active Record's API exactly, um, but it was really the only way that we could get this to work. And, and over the years, we've managed to improve this. We've managed to work with the Rails guys to make Active Record a little bit easier for us to implement on top of JDBC. Managed to get the performance up to a pretty good level as well. And uh, we're, we're pretty excited that we actually got this working. And, and the potential for Active Record JDBC is that we could probably have better cross-platform uh, database support. And I think in a lot of cases, we do have better cross-platform database support than actually the C implementation. We have people who, for example, will run on AIX with JRuby uh, calling out to Microsoft SQL Server. I mean, it's impossible things that you could not do with the C implementation just work out of the box with JRuby. All right, so I'll show a quick demo of some of this stuff. So first off, we'll look at the, the interactive shell. Okay, so I've got JRuby set up in 
path here. Uh, of course, our interactive version, our version is JIRB, because it's JRuby. And you know, it's like any typical rep.